Hey everyone, welcome to another video and today's video is going to be on what do cloud solution architects do at Microsoft. I've been working as one for the past 12 months now so hopefully I'll be able to give you a bit more insight than just a job listing so subscribe if you enjoy and I'll happily get my colleagues in other roles also to discuss what they do at Microsoft as well. So let's cut straight to the point here, a cloud solution architect has one main goal and that's to help customers move to the cloud. When I say the cloud, it can be confusing since Microsoft has multiple clouds it refers to such as Dynamics 365, Microsoft 365, but Cloud Solution Architects are focused on Azure. And just a heads up, throughout this video I may also refer to Cloud Solution Architects as CSAs. So with that high level overview, I'm going to now break it down a bit more. So first of all, what exactly is a customer? I'm saying we help customers move to the cloud. But why would I move you to the cloud? Well, a customer in this scenario is a company, not an ordinary person like you and me. My customers that I deal with are within the telecommunications, media and professional services industries. A customer from that industry or those industries could be you know, working with me or me working with them for a very long time. For example, I have a customer I've been leading their journey to Azure since the first month of joining back in July last year. I have other customers too, which are of similar length, but some activities I have with customers are short term, or maybe it's that I'm helping another cloud solution architect or specialist move them to the cloud. Perhaps, you know, more on what a specialist does in another video. So I mentioned that I'm a CSA within the telecommunications, media and professional services industries. Another cloud solution architect may be aligned to a different industry or specific work area such as apps, infrastructure, data security, data science, or artificial intelligence. You know, being an industry CSA, I also have tendencies to lean towards specific work domains myself such as apps and artificial intelligence, but I'm flexible to move in and out of other areas as well. So you can imagine the flexibility you have moving in and out of domains as a CSA, which can be quite liberating to some degree. One of my specialities, which you may have noticed in my day in a life video where I had a HoloLens 2, was that I also focus on mixed reality since I was assigned to be a mixed reality demo developer specialist as a side role. Another is also artificial intelligence slash machine learning services as well as app development as previously mentioned. Okay, so let's walk through a couple of examples of what a typical journey with a customer would be like for me as a CSA. One journey may be that a customer wants to move their website from self-hosted on-premise to the cloud, Azure. As a cloud solution architect, our job would be to help this customer move to the cloud by identifying what their existing environment is, what technical requirements they have, and deciphering what exactly they need to get from point A to point B. You know, in this scenario, there are many options. Perhaps they use a virtual machine with information, internet services, maybe they use Azure App Service, Azure Functions, web apps for containers, Azure Kubernetes services, you know, for database they could use Azure SQL and, you know, a host of different options. So the list goes on, it's our goal to understand which would work best for them and to work this out with the customer's best interests, aligning with their key performance metrics and objectives as well as informing them on which decisions would be best for them long term, informing them on roadmaps and keeping similar details as such in mind. Here, one great example which a colleague gave me when you know translating requirements which I love sharing is to say that if a customer says they want low latency in a database perhaps okay let me explain low latency basically means fast response times if I was to like just go straight off of that and think hey low latency in the Azure world lots of people would think of Cosmos DB which is sub 10 milliseconds but if a customer once low latency, perhaps they don't actually mean low latency by sub 10 milliseconds. If I was to say, hey, what do you mean? Perhaps they would say, oh, hey, low latency to me is actually five minutes. So by giving them Cosmos DB of their initial statement of low latency and not asking them what they actually mean, that's going to be an overkill and it's going to charge them way more than necessary, which is a bad thing. Wait, hey, hey, what? It's a bad thing if we charge customers more? Well, well, yes, we don't want to charge our customers more money than is needed. We're all about helping our customers be more successful. At the end of the day, we are within customer success or a customer success unit, and we want to help our customers achieve more. We want our customers have 
you know the best experience with Azure and Microsoft's mission statement is to literally empower them and you know by by making them waste money that's not really empowering them okay so let me give you another example perhaps a customer wants to enhance their business process you know with artificial intelligence I can't tell you the number of times I've shown customers how to make bots with Azure how to use services such as custom vision computer vision Azure machine learning services explaining or, you know the cognitive services we have or perhaps showing them demos with Azure cognitive search etc so say for example a customer you know we show them this you know we don't stop our journey there perhaps they have some issues we as CSAs are also there to help unblock them perhaps they have a trouble shooting session with us maybe we dive deep into the code some of us may prefer not to dive into the code I myself do but you know as long as we're helping the customers that that's pretty much our goal here so if you've taken any of the Microsoft Associate or Expert Level exams, you'll be at home with what I'm describing here. That's why they are called role-based certifications. It's a real, you know, real life application of what you'll find and you'll need to study. So if you're well versed with Microsoft certifications, check out my playlist here if you're not. Uh, but if you are, then you know pretty much everything you need to get started. All right, so hope you enjoyed this one. Like and subscribe if you loved it and take care. Bye bye.